Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a Cinema 4D video on a new feature for R18, the Push Apart Effector. So the Push Apart Effector is a new effector. If we go to MoGraph Effector, we'll see it right here. And the purpose of this one is to move or push clones away from each other when they start overlapping, and it can be used for a lot of other stuff too. So let's stick with this example, but I'm gonna turn off scaling and change it from distribution vertex to surface. So it's just gonna scale these little spikes along my surface and I can make more of them by turning this up. Well, you can see what the issue is here is it's eventually gonna start overlapping them and we can change the random seed to try to get different results, but we're starting to get some issues. So we might like how many we're getting, but we might wanna fix this overlapping issue. Well, now if we have our cloner selected, we can go to MoGraph Effector push apart and the default strength is going to be way too big so if we take our strength down you can see they'll move back onto my object and this default setting is going to move them off the object based on how big this radius is so if we take our radius pretty small and adjust the strength you can see it's moving them now in this case this isn't that useful so let's take a look at some of these other modes by default it's just going to push the clones away from their source. Let's reset these to the default settings and change this mode from push apart to hide. And we're not gonna see anything because our radius is too big, but if we take our radius down, now we'll start to see clones reappear. And basically if we go down to zero, we'd have all of them. And if we just start to turn this up, now you can see it's going to hide those clones that are intersecting within a certain radius. And if we want it to do more passes on this, we can turn up our iterations. So it can be a good way to keep our cloner settings the same, but get rid of some clones. We also could scale them apart, which is probably my favorite option for this sort of thing. And if we just reset these and then turn our radius down, what this is gonna do is just start to scale those overlapping clones and we could turn our iterations up. And then if we adjust our strength, we can see it's scaling them down so we get less and eventually no intersection. So this is a really cool way if we wanted to get some randomization and customization on this spiky ball looking thing that we made. And we could do it a little differently by using this push apart effector. Now we could use the push apart effector to do some other cool and pretty creative stuff besides just hiding clones. Here we have another example where we have a 3D icon that I set up that's made of extruded shapes and text and there's a bend in there. And we're fracturing it with the new Veronai Fracture, which is another really cool feature that I mentioned. And if we do a quick area render of this, we can see that we don't even see the cracks because the pieces are perfectly snapping together. And I have this push apart effector applied to the entire Veronai Fracture. And if I turn that on, you can see it's at the default settings of push apart, but a really small strength of 0 0.2. And you can see that that just pushes those pieces just a bit. So we start to see those cracks when we render and we could do some pretty cool stuff on all of our settings that we change our mode from push apart to scale apart. And I'll set this to a strength of like five. Now you can see it's evenly scaling all of our pieces as we increase our strength. So all the pieces would be sitting where they should be and just scaling down from their center as we adjust the strength. So that can be a pretty cool one. Now, our other options are along X, Y, and Z. And what this is gonna do is move the pieces along one axis. And then if I take the strength down, you can see how it's moving. So if we just wanted to take a MoGraph fracture or Veronai fracture object and just have the pieces move or animate along one axis, we could use this X, Y, or Z settings and do some pretty cool stuff as we adjust the strength radius and iterations so it's a really cool new effector you can do some really creative stuff with it and if you want to check out more new features for cinema 4d r18 be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where i have full breakdowns on all of the new features including my top five new features MoGraph updates the new thin film shader the awesome new vernoy fracture and more new features and don't forget to check out some of the new Cinema 40 products I have in the online store at motiontutorials.net slash store, where you can pick up Cinema 40 templates, lighting and rendering assets, and new packs for 360 Environment Maps Pro. 
which are packs of 8K environment photos, assets, and the Cinema 4D templates to quickly and easily make your 3D scenes look awesome. If you have any questions on this tutorial or any of my other new feature tutorials, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. I love hearing from fans of the videos and talking about all these new features. And if you want a quick dose of other new features for R18, be sure to check out the other R18 videos I have up on YouTube by clicking on any of those thumbnails that are popping up there now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.